Greetings everyone, the Good Sir Knight here, and today we're going to be discussing something that was a relatively important piece of gear for those who live out in Okinawa, and generally colder regions, sufficiently colder than Okinawa, that gear is the Gore-Tex, the extended cold weather... I can never remember around that point. Anyway, what it is, is they shoot everyone. They have, well, three generations now. I'm only particularly familiar with the first two. So I'm going to cover those ones, the third generations are just getting more into soft shell, waterproof jackets, and other nonsense. But basically what the Gore-Tex does, for those who are new to the concept, is that although it's mostly for, well, extended cold weather, you'd use it to keep snow off of you because snow will melt against body heat and then that causes water and problems like that. So it's mostly for that, but it is also relatively wind and, well, rainproof. Resistant is a better word. Because you can wear this, what we mostly did, in Okinawa particularly, that made it popular with all the Marines, is you would throw your Gore-Tex on at least the jacket, and if there was a heavy rain, it would stick. It would stay mostly close to your body, not unlike the poncho, especially with Okinawa winds, and that kept you, well, mostly dry. In addition, it has vents under the arms that you can use to keep yourself also a bit cooler, so you don't die of dehydration or heat exhaustion. So, cool little thing. The Generation 2 I have is the old Tricolor Woodlands, because I just like it better. I like it better than Marpad. It's not that Marpad's a bad design, it's just that you wear it as a slave uniform for so many years, and you kind of don't want to wear it anymore. So, I've got, the, I've got the Generation 2. I also ended up getting a older, older Generation 1. Now, Generation 1 is what they had basically issued us before we finished all our MOS training and stuff, and then after that we got Gen 2, when we actually hit the fleet. So Gen 2 has a lot of nice upgrades. The one I have is missing a few things that my Marpat one had. But beside the point, let us actually get to the Gore-Tex itself. So, with the older, like, Generation 1 version, the main thing, the hood is not retractable, although it is decided to be massive and fit over your helmet. We've got your little chest piece here. I don't remember if the Gen 1 actually started with this or not. These woodlands I got are sort of like a weird 1.2, 1.8, weird variant mix between the two, so. So to keep in mind, you got the button closures over the zipper. All these zippers have this long black uh, attachment to help you get access to it regardless. And then you've got your hood, and the hood has buttons, because initially they wanted to also have a weird fur upgrade, because the Gen 1 was just kind of a unique thing, so. Got your thing, so you've got your hand warmer pockets. These ones are at the 45 degree angle slant. These ones have buttons as well as Velcro, Velcro closures. And you put your hand in there and you go, oh cool, I have a pocket. And these also, interestingly enough, have the single pocket on the sleeve here, which has a little pen pocket and everything inside of it. So, generation one is pretty good. The liner is decent. It's two separate layers as opposed to a single, well I guess it is a layer. Anyway, it's the older, older type of Gore-Tex. It works pretty well, although the Generation 2 did improve upon it to a degree. And as you can see here, under the sleeves, you have the, is this single or double? Okay, single. So the Generation 1 had a single pair of zippers to control the arm vent flow. The uh, Gen 2 actually has two zippers here, so you can adjust the actual location and the opening from there. And then you've got the Velcro sleeves, as you'd expect. I believe on the inside... Yeah, there's not much of a waistband. There's this little attachment with a waistband cord running through it, but it's flimsy at best. But if it is a torrential downpour, or there's snow everywhere, or it's just really cold and windy, or cold, windy, and rainy, as it is almost always in Okinawa forever, then this becomes a boon to have. Although this one is fairly bulky compared to the poncho and other stuff you can have, you can compress it via the powers of Marine Corps technology, i.e. squeeze it really hard and just jam it into the pack as hard as you can, and boom. Now, these also come with, I've got the Gen 1 trousers. I don't have Gen 2 trousers. The only real difference is the pocket cover is a bit bigger. Actually, yeah, there we go. So this one's got the little button clip closure. That lets you access your inner pockets. 
from the front or the left and right side, but not from the back. It's in pretty good shape. You've got your button closure and zipper, those little pull tabs and 550 cord, and of course your natural instructions. And other than that, you got your ankle clippings and your little zippers. These zippers allow you to fit your bits, your uh, your bits, your boots in a lot more comfortably. So that's the Gen one I have here. The other pair I have is still a Gen one set of trousers. And the main difference is the uh, Gen two, from what I noticed, other than the upgraded Gore-Tex interior lining, as you see here. It says Gore-Tex everywhere is the main difference. Other than that, the Gen two also just had like cargo pockets on the outside, which are nice to keep a beanie in. That's about the most I use them for. Now this one, key difference for the Gen 2, still got your little rank insignia tab. Although, since we're mostly doing airsoft and stuff, or gen unless, I mean, even if you were in the military, you're generally not going to want to wear your rank insignia while just playing airsoft, because that would make you a nerd and I will call you a boot to your face. So, don't wear your rank insignia if you are in the military. I don't know why you would want to, and if you're not in the military, then you probably shouldn't be wearing rank insignias. Dirty, dirty, dirty. So, you got this top pocket here that you can put stuff in, and there is, huh, a piece of gum in there. I'm gonna have to clean that. Oh, the joys of buying things on eBay. And then you've also got these side hand warmer pockets, so you can still keep your hand warm while being considered a nasty bag of ass. And you've got your double underarm zippers here. As I mentioned, this one has two, so you can adjust those two sides. And then you've got a pocket on this sleeve, and a pocket on this sleeve. So you got two pockets now, so you've doubled your pockets, and you also have twice as many pockets on the front, which means you can make things a lot bulkier. Now, the key difference I noticed, because I did remember this, I actually had to go look up the pictures, on the, you can actually see there's, this is obviously a pocket, which is why I remembered I had a pocket on my uh, Marpat version, but this one has no zipper with which to access it. So why oh why, I know not, but I mean, it's cool. Maybe there's a way to do it. But yeah, so Gen 2 has a few upgrades and they're all really nice. So anyway, as far as donning and doffing the garment, or at least the donning portion, it's pretty easy. Now the downside with this pair is it is a large, and I am not a large fellow. But hey, if we're here, we might as well put it on, right? So I can at least, yeah, you know, Vortexes are incredibly comfy. They're not nearly as hot as you would think them to be. My dump pouch is going to hinder me sufficiently. Yeah, you know, we'll just put it under the dump pouch. We're gonna keep access to our dump pouch because we're just cool guys. Put that up there, the zipper goes up. You would then put down the zippers here and blouse it over your boots, which should also be waterproof. Hopefully. You're, uh, if you're wearing the summer type of events, you're going to have a bad time. But yeah. So, not everyone... No, definitely not everyone likes to carry the uh, trousers for the added bulk, but the trousers do help out exponentially in keeping you cool and dry. Emphasis on the cool part. So that out of the way. We'll don our Gen 2 Gore-Tex here. Throw this over. This thing is, again, relatively massive. The hood is stowed. It's not that much different. The hood on this one is smaller than the uh, one over there because they figured putting the hood over your helmet wasn't a big deal. You can just put it under your hood or whatever. So, butt enclosures up here. And we're really starting to look like Marsoc, or Raiders, or any of the cool kids who still prefer the Woodlands. So you button all those up. You got your hood available, then it's got the pull tabs. Button this up here. Actually, I'm just gonna... Yeah. 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 So another thing, the Gen 1 also has the uh, Velcro everywhere, and this one just has buttons, so... You blouse this with your gloves and you are looking like one comfy person when it's cold and no one's looking you put those hands in your pockets you become a disgusting thing but damn will you be warm actually yeah this thing's already okay so it's cold Okinawa standard right now and I'm already still feeling a bit spicy so the great thing about the vents is if you do find yourself kind of you'll 
actually, ironically, you'd probably have a shotgun because if you're wearing this, you're probably wearing some type of armor underneath it and standing post with the hood on and your ca and your cover underneath it because why not? And you're standing there, you got your shotgun, and all of a sudden some chaos breaks out and you need to go run over there. So you're running around dashing and shooting. But, well, hopefully not shooting too many things, but if you gotta shoot something, you gotta shoot something. See, so there you go. Ah, you in cover, dive, dash, roll, nonsense. And well, you find yourself to be perspiring quite intensely. And you're also heating up way too much, and you're like, huh, I'm actually going to overheat despite this cold weather. What you'd want to do is you can just grab one of these little zippers here. You might have to have your slung weapon placed somewhere. So apparently some people didn't get this on, the last on one of the videos I did, but this airsoft shotgun, I would never recommend you put your shotgun anywhere against your body to adjust something, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to do it, and it's airsoft, and it's not going to kill me. Otherwise, put the shotgun somewhere safe. I mean, you should always practice how you fight anyway, but... This is a bit of a pain. As you can see, this was not the most expedient thing to do. But you could always... Come on, work with me. This is why the uh, long tab is such a big deal, too. It takes work, is the moral of the story. Let's try this one. Oh, these are button closures too, so you can uh, keep them open and buttoned closed to keep the rain out. So, yeah, not the easiest thing to do, but even with just those small openings. So, there we go. Yeah, just jam your hand in there, by the way. Don't fight with the zipper, just jam your hand in there and poke it up with your fingers. And boom, you've opened your vents. And now you've actually got some breathability in, so. Well, you're still running around and doing pew 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 and blam blam and blam, bright flashlights. You're not gonna die of overheating. Which is fantastic, because overheating this thing sucks. And I'm actually nice and warm right now, so... And in addition, since it's tricolor, you won't look too much like a nerd if you work out in town. I mean, if you couldn't tell by the cry trousers, I personally prefer just solid colors, but you know. So doffing, pretty easy. Pop the buttons, unzip. Acquire freedom. Undo sleeves. And then you go... Ugh. Vietnam! And pants are pretty simple too. You just undo the zippers and everything. Pull them off over your boots. No, I mean the actual boots. I'm not talking to brand new Marines. And yeah, then look. Boom. You are now cool and dry. And uh, preferably indoors at this point. And if it's particularly cold, you can wear your fleece. Apparently some people don't know, with a fleece, a fleece is nowhere near windproof warm, but not windproof, hence the necessity of the Gore-Tex. Oh yeah, and check it out. There's an EGA. Yeah. So, Gore-Tex, that's a pretty basic review. There's a lot more to them that I'm not going into. But as far as your day-to-day, -day, you roll it up into a ball, you stuff it into a bag, and you're marching to and fro because your command won't let you have a vehicle, because it's Okinawa. I mean, that's how it is. The Air Force kids, they get vehicles when they show up. They're like, hey, you're in the Air Force here. Cars for everyone. You get in the mink, they're like, oh, you better pick up Sergeant for hearing ain't anything. Mm -mm. Sergeant or married? So, married. Contract marriages. No one would do a contract marriage and cheat the system. So, that's my review, explanation, mashup on Gore-Texes. I would go wear it and just stand out in the rain and wind for hours on anvil screaming at the camera, but all you'd hear is wind. <laughs> the camera's not waterproof, so you probably wouldn't hear anything. And yeah, that would be pretty much all there is to it, so. Gore-Tex. Everyone's gotta love them. They're pretty fantastic. And it'll keep you dry, so. Cool stuff. I'm the good tonight. The guy wears the leopard print on YouTube. Because my concealed my waistband holster came in and it's Tiffany blue. And it smells like pumpkin spice latte. And I am tickled immensely by that. So, hope you liked the review. Cheers everyone, and I'll see you in the next one. Stay chivalrous. Always
always watching.